Schönen guten Tag, liebe Seherinnen und Hörer des YouTube-Kanals der Zeitschrift International. Hier spricht wieder Fritz Edlinger. Das ist ein ganz kurzes Vorwort zu einem äh, Video, das äh, im Anschluss äh, gesendet wird. Das Video ist ebenfalls nicht allzu lange. Es ist ein aktuelles Gespräch aus dem äh, US-amerikanischen äh, Sender äh, Democ Democracy Now! Dort äh, führt die Moderatorin Amy Goodman ein Gespräch mit Professor Ilan Pape über aktuelle Ereignisse im Zusammenhang mit der Situation in Palästina und in Israel. Ich möchte ganz kurz darauf Bezug nehmen, auch weil wir ja schon vor einigen Tagen ein längeres Video von Professor Pape ins Netz gestellt haben. Es war das ein Vortrag wenige Tage nach dem Terroranschlag der Hamas aufgenommen. Das Video ist sehr gut angekommen. Wir haben sehr viele Zuseherinnen und Zuseher bekommen. Herzlichen Dank und noch viel mehr herzlichen Dank für die zahlreichen Stellungnahmen. In dem Zusammenhang noch mehr herzlicher Dank, weil auch viel mehr Stellungnahmen waren zu einem Video, das ich aufgenommen habe einige Tage danach mit Professor Mosche Zuckermann. Das ist das bislang beste Video gewesen auf unserem YouTube-Kanal. Herzlichen Dank. Wir haben täglich noch hunderte und tausende äh, Anseher und auch viele Kommentare. Und in diesem Zusammenhang möchte ich eine Klarstellung oder eine Stellungnahme äh, auch abgeben, weil äh, wir natürlich auch in der Redaktion äh, über die schreckliche Situation in Palästina und in Israel und auch über die sehr, sehr, sehr bedenklichen Auswirkungen auf die Situation in Europa diskutieren. Und es kann natürlich niemand, auch wir von, von international, kann zufrieden, glücklich oder, oder wie immer man das bezeichnen darf, mit den Auswirkungen unmittelbar hier in Europa auch in Österreich und in Deutschland besonders sein. Wir sind sehr betroffen, dass dieser ganze Konflikt auch zu einer Welle von Antisemitismus, von Gewalttätigkeiten ähm, äh, in Europa geführt hat. Es war nicht überraschend. Es war für jene überraschend, die vielleicht die Be äh, Entwicklungen im Nahen Osten, äh, die ja schon seit 70 und noch mehr Jahren äh, eigentlich unverändert sind, eben die nicht regelmäßig verfolgt haben und sich nicht informiert haben, was dort äh, abspielt. Und in dem Zusammenhang ganz kurz auch nochmals Ilan Pappe zitiert, sowohl bei dem längeren Video als auch bei dem kurzen Interview jetzt mit äh, Amy Goodman. Ilan Pappe, der ein israelischer Historiker ist, kommt immer wiederum auf die Grundursache dieses Problems, äh, das wir bis heute haben und leider inzwischen auch in den Straßen von Wien, in den Straßen von Berlin, in Paris haben, nämlich die ethnische Säuberung ähm, des palästinensischen Volkes durch die Gründung des Staates Israel. Ähm, das soll in keinster Weise und darf in keinster Weise irgendwelche wahnsinnige antisemitische ähm, Übergriffe in Europa entschuldigen oder, oder abschwächen. Äh, die sind eine Katastrophe. Der Antisemitismus bei dieser Gelegenheit soll wiederholt werden, ist ein europäisches Phänomen. Wir hätten natürlich jede äh, Veranlassung mit unserer eigenen Denkweise, mit unseren eigenen Reaktionen und Aktionen äh, kritisch uns auseinanderzusetzen. Aber das, was 
Israel, was der jüdische Staat Israel seit 1948 den dortigen indigenen Palästinensern antut, hat mit dem Antisemitismus unmittelbar, der aus Europa exportiert wurde, nichts zu tun, sondern ist eine völkerrechtswidrige Gewalttat per se. Und äh, es ist daher wichtig, diese Dinge zu versuchen auseinanderzuhalten und nicht eine äh, Wahnsinnigkeit, ein Verbrechen durch das andere abzutrechen, zu relativieren oder zu entschuldigen. Der Antisemitismus in Europa ist durch nichts zu entschuldigen und ist durch nichts zu rechtfertigen. Dem muss man entgegentreten. Genauso muss man aber auch entgegentreten, auch als Mensch, der international denkt und handelt, dass eben seit 1948 der Staat Israel in unterschiedlichen Regierungen bis hin zu einer rechtsradikalen faschistoiden Regierung heute in Israel dem Palästinenser seine Rechte nimmt. Rechte, die durch die UNO, durch das Völkerrecht eindeutig und unbestreitbar sind. Und wir versuchen als international sehr wohl auch diese historischen Bedingungen, die zu der schrecklichen Situation, die wir heute auch wiederum in Gaza haben, äh, beizutragen und wollen damit aber in keinster Weise irgendetwas abschwächen, irgendetwas entschuldigen. Das, was Hamas äh, am 7. Oktober getan hat, war ein Verbrechen, war auch ein Verbrechen gegen Menschlichkeit. Aber das hat nichts damit zu tun, dass das, was heute und seit einigen Tagen die israelische Armee den zweieinhalb Millionen Palästinenserinnen und Palästinensern in Gaza tut, ebenfalls ein Verbrechen ist und gegen Völkerrecht ist. Beide Dinge muss man so benennen, wie sie sind. Und das ist unser Versuch als international. Ich wollte das vielleicht ein bisschen emotional, weil in dieser Situation kann man eigentlich nicht cool und distanziert agieren, äh, sondern man muss einfach sich voll äh, auf die Dinge einlassen. Ich wollte das eben in dem Zusammenhang auch noch einmal feststellen und in diesem Sinne noch einmal zum x Mal Professor Ilan Pape, den ich sehr, sehr schätze, zitieren und zitieren in dem Sinne, dass die ethnische Säuberung mit ein wesentliches Problem ist und eine der Ursachen der schrecklichen Dinge, die wir nicht erst in den letzten Tagen und Wochen, sondern in Wirklichkeit schon seit Jahrzehnten in Palästina, in Israel sehen. Und in diesem Sinn, schauen Sie sich bitte auch dieses Video an, weil dieses Video auch eine äh, Detailinformation enthält, die bislang in der breiten Öffentlichkeit kaum äh, bekannt war. Wenn diese wenn diese, dieser Plan, nämlich der, der Vertreibung der gesamten palästinensischen Bevölkerung aus dem Gazastreifen äh, durch Israel und der, äh, um, um den Gazastreifen zu evakuieren, um einen zweiten Kanal zwischen dem Roten Meer und dem Mittelmeer zu errichten, wenn das stimmt, dann ist das eine unerhörte neue Information und mit ein Motiv, warum eventuell manche in Israel so agieren, wie sie jetzt agieren. In diesem Sinn, schauen Sie sich das kurze Interview an. Ich würde mich freuen über weitere Kommentare auf unserem YouTube-Kanal. Sie können auch, wenn Sie länger Stellung nehmen wollen, uns E-Mails an die Adresse von äh, International senden. In diesem Sinn, Danke für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit und bis zum nächsten Mal. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Internal Israeli government documents have revealed the Israeli Ministry of Intelligence is recommending the forcible transfer of the entire population of Gaza to the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt. The 10-page document, which is dated October 13th, 
has been published in full by the Israeli news outlets Local Call and Plus 972. The document recommends transferring all Palestinians to Egypt and setting up a, quote, sterile zone of several kilometers near the border between Egypt and Gaza. In addition, the document recommends Israel then prevent the, quote, return of the population to activities residences near the border with Israel, unquote. Fears of a new Nakba, or catastrophe, have been growing ever since Israel ordered all Palestinians living in Gaza City and in North Gaza to vacate their homes and head south. On Monday, Palestinian U.N. Ambassador Riyad Mansour accused Israel of trying to depopulate Gaza. They want do to depopulate the Gaza Strip completely from the entire population and throw them in the lap of Egypt in the Sinai Desert. No one should justify our killing or find reasons to give more time to the killer. Call for an end of this assault on an entire nation. Stop the killings in the West Bank by settlers and occupation forces and the forced displacement underway there. We go now to Haifa in Israel, where we're joined by the Israeli historian Ilan Pape. He's professor of history and the director of the European Center for Palestine Studies at the University of Exeter. He's the author of several books, including The Ethnic Cleansing of Palestine and A History of Modern Palestine, One Land, Two Peoples, as well as The Idea of Israel, A History of Power and Knowledge. Fifty years ago, Ilan Pape fought in the Israeli military during the 1973 Arab-Israeli War, has since become a leading critic of Israel's occupation. Professor Pape, welcome back to Democracy Now! If you can start off by uh, talking about your take on what's happening today. You just heard the doctor in Gaza who just left al-Shifa a few minutes ago. Yes, I think, uh, Amy, it's good to be back uh, on your program. Thank you for having me. Uh, I think what we're seeing now, what unfolds in front of our eyes, uh, is a genocidal situation uh, by which people are targeted, uh, whether they are children, babies, uh, in hospital or in schools. And uh, this is a massive operation of killing, of ethnic cleansing, uh, of depopulation. The pretext for that kind of savagery is revenge for what the Hamas did on the 7th of October. But I think the real intention here is not just revenge, but trying to exploit what happened on the 7th of October to create new realities uh, and historical uh, Palestine. You called it uh, a new Nakba. I think that this is the Nakba has never really ended for the Palestinians, so it's a new horrific chapter in the ongoing Nakba uh, that the Palestinians are suffering uh, uh, here. So this is a really a, a horrific situation that can only be stopped from the outside because there is no motivation inside Israel uh, to stop the operations, nor to care more about the lives of innocent people despite what the Israeli army claims to, to do uh, in the field itself. I want to play a short clip of Prime Minister Netanyahu speaking um, over the weekend. You must remember what Amalek has done to you, says our Holy Bible. And we do remember and we are fighting our brave troops and combatants who are now in Gaza or around Gaza and in all other regions in Israel are joining this chain of Jewish heroes, a chain that has started 3,000 years ago from Joshua ben Nun until the heroes of 1948, the Six-Day War, the 17th the October War and all other wars in this country are hero troops. They have one supreme main goal, to completely defeat the murderous enemy and to guarantee our existence in this country. We've always said, never again, never again is now. And I want to play Netanyahu from last night. Calls for a ceasefire are calls for Israel to surrender to Hamas, to surrender to terrorism. 
to surrender to barbarism. That will not happen. Can you respond to the Israeli prime minister, Professor Pape? Yes, I think the main uh, attempt here is to make sure that people do not understand the context in which the Hamas operation uh, occurred. To totally dishistoricize uh, that event, to forget about the 15 years of inhuman siege on Gaza, or 56 years of a ruthless occupation and ethnic cleansing in the West Bank and 75 years of not allowing refugees to come back uh, to their homes. I think this is an attempt to Nazify the Palestinians, which is not you, by the way. The Israelis every now and then use it. If you remember, Menachem Begin uh, 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 compared uh, Yasser Arafat in the bunker in 1982 to Hitler in the bunker. Uh, the, the Nazification of the Palestinians is meant to, first of all, license uh, Israeli policies without any consideration to international law uh, or, or human rights. And secondly, to divert us from talking about the real issue here, which is not uh, the Hamas or uh, its uh, actions on the 7th of October, but rather the situation that uh, bred this kind of violence. Uh, rather than talking about the symptom of violence, we should talk about the source of violence. And the source of violence has not changed. We have millions of Palestinians for years being oppressed, ruled and controlled by, by Israel. And they are fighting with the means that they have. Uh, and this is going to go on uh, unless, of course, there is a willingness to go back to the uh, negotiation table and ask why the uh, violence erupted in the first place and what are the best ways to prevent another cycle of violence uh, in the future. There's a second reason for Netanyahu's uh, uh, rhetoric. Of course, he, he doesn't want the Israeli media or the international community uh, uh, to deal with his own uh, problems that were very acute before the 7th of October, and uh, to say this is now a situation where you cannot at all, but this is a domestic issue, you cannot uh, talk about me or my failures, this is a moment of existential uh, 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 threat to, to Israel, and therefore uh, uh, this kind of rhetoric will continue. Uh, and, and it's very dangerous, not to mention the fact that it abuses, when they use the Holocaust, it abuses the Holocaust memory, uh, because with all the horror of what happened on the 7th of October, uh, this is not the Holocaust, and there's no comparison between Palestinians who act after years of oppression and siege to Nazis who just target Jews because of their Jews. There's no comparison, this whole language is not the one to be used, and uh, uh, I think that uh, Netanyahu uh, is trying to galvanize uh, a, a very vindicative Israel behind him. And the results of this kind of policy are unfolding in front of our eyes. And we just had this horrific and very moving uh, 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 kind of report that you had with, uh, with the doctor from Gaza b before me. Professor Pape, can you talk about the hostage families? Um, uh, they don't get a lot of attention what they're calling for, though they get tremendous attention for who these hostages are and the people who were killed on October 7th. Uh, but there are many. Um, for example, we interviewed uh, Noy Katzman, the brother of Chaim, who uh, was killed by Hamas on October 7th. He said his brother was a peace activist, and he himself uh, said, not in my brother's name. Um, he called for a ceasefire. Um, and I wanted to ask you about this force of the hostage families and about the everybody for everybody proposal. Uh, on Friday, just after we got off the broadcast, um, it said, you know, imminent major release. And some thought that Netanyahu was pushing forward with the invasion more quickly because he didn't want uh, this possibility to happen. But explain the proposal of all Ref all hostages, um, over 200 of them, in return for all Palestinian prisoners, and who these prisoners are, close to 7,000 of them. Yes, I, I think that uh, not everybody among the families, because I don't think they're all made of the same clothes, uh, but many of them uh, understand 
that the only way to bring their uh, dear ones back home is this kind of an exchange of uh, prisoners. Uh, we are talking about uh, thousands of Palestinians who are incarcerated in Israeli uh, jails, many of them without trials, uh, and they are their kind of uh, the allegations against them vary from actual participation in uh, guerrilla or uh, 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 violent actions against Israeli citizens or soldiers, and, and those who are uh, uh, incarcerated for being a member of a Palestinian organization. Uh, they are, some of them are very young, some of them are women, some of them are very old and have been there for a very long time, and some of them were just recently incarcerated uh, without trial uh, in, uh, in, in the West Bank. Um, they are all part of the Palestinian liberation movement, uh, and it needs uh, a, a very different Israeli perception of the Palestinian struggle and those who participated in its, its struggle to be able to say, indeed, this is the only way forward, namely to release all of them to the last one and receive all of the people who were taken by the Hamas in on the 7th of October. What I can tell you, Amy, which is very interesting, that former uh, generals in the Israeli army, former heads of the Israeli Mossad and uh, Shabak, the secret service, are supporting this kind of exchange. Uh, and, and this is a, a very important position that they are holding, and that may explain the fear on Netanyahu's uh, uh, side to let this issue extend longer, because the voices that are calling for such an exchange are not coming from the extreme Israeli left or the liberal Zionists. They're coming from some very powerful people who were heading some of Israel's most important institutions, such as the, the Mossad, the army, and the secret service. Um, will it take place? I don't know. It depends very much on how things unfold on the ground itself with the invasion that nobody in Israel gives the Israeli public any details of how it goes on. But it seems that it doesn't go as well as the Israelis claim it does. And uh, depends a lot, of course, of the international community because quite a few of the people who are held by the Hamas have also dual citizenship. Uh, but there's no doubt, Amy, this is the only way to release the, the people who were taken on Saturday. Uh, neither Israeli commando salvage operation nor piecemeal deal will bring all the people back. This is a, 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 a situation where you can solve the problem and not delay it for another five or six years with babies and old people who might not survive a long stay in captivity. Professor Pape, you were born to German Jewish parents who fled uh, German persecution, the Nazis, in the 1930s. You fought in 1973 in the Israeli military. Um, can you talk about your life trajectory and how you came to write a book talking about the ethnic cleansing? of Palestine and the response in Israeli society, your university, University of Haifa, and how you ended up at Exeter? Yes, it was, I mean, it was, it was a journey. Uh, there was no one moment of epiphany or awakening that makes you uh, actually take positions which will frame you as a traitor in your own society and definitely would leave you with no reference group in your own society. And for me, it was a journey that uh, had many important stations, such as uh, spending some time uh, as a postgraduate student outside of Israel, having an uh, Arab supervisor, uh, looking as uh, an historian who was interested in the history of my own country, in the documentation that became available about uh, 1948. So all these uh, uh, possibilities outside to meet Palestinians on equal footing, uh, to be able to research as a professional historian's a history or documentation that revealed evidence that contradicted in, in, in a very significant way uh, the narrative in which I grew upon. Uh, all this led me to a moment where I thought that I understand what is going on in historical Palestine, what went on in historical Palestine, 
And I saw quite clearly, at least from my perspective, who were the victimizers, who were the victim, who was the colonizer, who was the colonized, who was the ethnic cleanser, and who was the victims of ethnic cleanse. And because my, my parents came from Germany and because we lost a lot of people uh, in, in the Holocaust, exactly because of that legacy, I felt I could not be indifferent to the suffering of the Palestinians, nor did I want to be part of Uh, of the society that caused these suffering. And uh, I think that uh, as the years go by and the research becomes more and more uh, intensive and my understanding and, and relationship with the Palestinians become more increased and, and uh, widened, uh, I'm, I'm even more confident today than I was in the early years of my career, either as an activist or as a professional historian, uh, that uh, I'm, I'm very at peace with my moral positions toward Israel and Zionism. Uh, in 2006, that position led to pressure from my university uh, to, to leave the university and to uh, resign. Uh, so I had no choice. I had to resign and I had to leave. I was very happy. lucky to be offered a position in a university in Britain where I founded the Center for Palestine Studies. I'm still uh, a citizen of Israel. I'm still going to Israel. I'm spending time in Israel. I'm spending time in Britain and trying to divide between the two places. And I still believe that what I cherish as human rights, as human morality, is the only basis for better life for everyone concerned, Jews and Palestinians alike. Uh, in a, a state in the future that would be based on equality, with, that would not discriminate against people because of their nationality, religion, or culture, and one which will rectify past evils and would allow refugees to return and hopefully build uh, a, a state that would radiate and influence the Middle East as a whole. Ilan Pape, we want to thank you for being with us, professor of history, director of the European Center for Palestine Studies at the University of Exeter, author of many books, including The Ethnic Cleansing of Palestine and Gaza in Crisis, which he co-wrote with Noam Chomsky.